Hi everyone. So let's try to understand this uh, bucket analogy. Like there is a public bucket, there is a private bucket. How you can access through the API. So we have file service which is doing upload currently to the public bucket because we are going to upload the logos. That should be fine if we put them public. Public. So there is a files public URL and it is going to give us URL that is accessible to the planet because the S3 bucket is open to public. Okay, and you can do the read operation on the bucket. It is allowing you because we have to add a policy that uh, anybody can do the get uh, object from that S3 bucket. Now, uh, if we uh, do the same thing, if you try to understand the same thing when the bucket is private and if you try to upload it, yes, we can upload in the similar fashion, but the whatever the URL we are going to return, either we return a pre signed URL after the upload or uh, what we can do is we can actually get the pre-signed url first by passing the file name and do the put from the front end so there are two different strategies to upload a data to the private bucket or any bucket i mean that's a strategy what you can do is you can get a signed url with expiry by hitting a api get signed url and pass the file object file object doesn't contain a file just a file name and uh, some id parameter which you want to store in the database it will give you the signed URL and then what you can do is you can do a put call exios.put on that signed URL with your file object. Okay, it doesn't have a public access. So always you need to access the object using a signed URL, pre-signed URL, uh, you can call it because uh, directly if you try to access the bucket URL, uh, file object URL, same as the public bucket, then you will get uh, unauthorized because uh, you cannot access it. So every time when you try to read the file you should get a pre-signed url first and then you try to access it and for the upload you can upload you can do two things you do the same file post upload and once you are returning the response create a pre-signed url that you can that uh, ui can use to preview to show on, and all those things and another thing is first you can get a pre-signed url and do the put call from the your react client Okay, so these are the different ways. Let's try to see that in action. So now let's work on our file service and see how it is doing. We did npm run start. We are, we have added all the modules. Okay, this is next could not find config service element. And that is happening when we need to make sure that provider exists. So this issue is regarding, I think I got the point. So config service config module was not added in the app module and I just added app module and it starts working because we already have this config service issue. That's why we need to move to the dynamic module. I will talk about like how we are doing it. So I just created a, a migration for the one table which we have and I will try to console log the config service in AWS service. So here we have a domain module. This is the domain module we have, which contains the auth module, app log module, config module and files module. And then if you look into the files module, which contains all the required dependency like Prisma module, AWS S3 module. Okay. Now, uh, if you try to debug this thing like uh, AWS S3 module, which contains AWS S3 service. Uh, and we, here we are initializing the S3 client in the constructor. So this is Prisma module straightforward and this is how it works. There is no issue with that. Now if we try to app module, which has the domain module. So I'm just talking about the structuring. Okay. And here, this is, this is the structure. So if you look into this, so there are two different approach I try to use. One is like, let's say we are not using packages. I'm just using the config module inside the code base only and this AWS S3 module inside a code base on. Then I got the instance of config service here. I mean, that works like uh, as expected. And here now what I'm doing is I will try to just remove this AWS config module and I will try to get this from the package. So here we are going to get this from the package which we have created. Okay, now I need to fix it from one more place in the DAO service. I need to get this AWS S3 service from the package. So there are two use cases. Let's say we are just adding both these packages here. 
right in the code not in the packages so inside a lib create a lib folder put a aws s3 module a and aws s3 service put a config service and config module somewhere in the code base then it really works fine but let's say when we are creating this as a separate package and then if i try to console log aws s3 service so if i try to go to here we have aws s3 service and it try try to console log here then i'm getting undefined so this is a critical point i mean that's why my application also was not able to run because if i try to pass config service dot get this service initialization will fail and module initialization will also fail because you are putting something in the constructor that must that needs to work to start the application otherwise you can have some initialize method and initialize the client there okay so the issue here is if you try to understand the structure we have aws s3 module config module config module is getting injected in aws s3 module that's still fine then aws s3 module we are injecting uh, adding in the file service so somehow this uh, config service dependency is lost so we are getting this config service undefined then i try to understand why i, I will still debug this what is the, the real reason but then i had an idea of, of a okay let's try to create a dynamic module a dynamic module where i can inject the config service putting the aws s3 module in the file service so i will import aws s3 service and then inject the config service in file service only so let's say if we do it like this we have aws s3 we are adding config in the aws s3 and then aws s3 we are using in the file service it doesn't work now we changed our plan now what we are doing is we are creating this aws s3 dynamic module which is taking this runtime config parameters runtime config module that is working that will work and we are trying to make it work so this is aws s3 dynamic it's like a, another package i will build uh, there which uh, is going to take config module as a parameter at runtime okay so this is the nest cs app file service and uh, this is our uh, config module config module is external because this is external package so config module we are importing in the a nest app and aws s3 dynamic module we are importing in the nest app right here we are doing a aws s3 client module dot for root async or for root and passing the config module there itself so there is no cascade dependency config module is not on aws s3 module and then aws s3 module we are not adding in the s3 service sorry in the file service we are importing both the packages separately config module aws s3 dynamic module come to this nest service and then i'm saying client module dot for root and passing the runtime uh, config module in the nest.js service so it's like this is the change i'm doing and i believe that this will work because it's a dynamic initialization and here this is coming undefined so i created this dynamic package aws s3 dynamic package and we will see how it really look like i have already talked about these things uh, many times like how to create a dynamic package either http client or a send grid client uh, send grid module dynamic module or here we are doing aws s3 dynamic module so this is really a core aspect of uh, nest.js i'm trying to restart nest.js because sometimes it doesn't show the dependencies show the packages so this is the dynamic i will try to build it so this dynamic module is kind of a similar but it is doing the dynamic initialization if you look into the code then you will try to understand it it is just exposing for root and for root async methods which is taking config module as an input and from the config module options we are passing this s3 client bucket s3 client oh sorry aws access key id and aws secret access key or aws region and the bucket and here i will do pnpm install i imported aws s3 dynamic module also and then here you can see uh, dynamic module will populated in the node modules of file service in some time it is coming up and this is the dynamic module okay so we have created a dynamic uh, initialization so what i will do is i will go to app service and this is what we need to do aws s3 client module dot for root async this is what i'm doing and i'm passing the config module which i have imported from the package so here there is no like a is dependent on b and then b is we are importing in c here a and b we are importing in c and i'm passing i'm initializing 
B by passing the CH dependency. So NestJS feels comfortable by passing runtime uh, config module because sometimes what happens the reason is config module is not even initialized and you are trying to access the config module inside the AWS S3 module. So it's a runtime initialization that means we don't need config module right uh, during the initialization of AWS S3 client module. It's a dynamic initialization so get the AWS S3, it get the config module initialized we will get all these config module options like uh, AWS S3 client module options that contains the bucket key ID and reason we will pass them and then this is how we initialize it so for root async if you look into the definition of for root async what it is then we will try to we will understand this uh, properly so it's a secret access key is it the correct one I think we have a misplaced argument which we need to fix in the config service. So these are the module options we have. Access key ID and access secret key, secret access key. Same we need to populate here. Okay, this should work now. These are the module options we have changed. So we need to build it again and whenever you build and whenever you build the target it automatically pull the latest uh, bundle so here we will just fix the secret key so when you are building this uh, file service will also build all the other packages together and will get the latest build from there so this is how we need to inject so if you see the how we are doing a dependency injection here it's little different than uh, how we do it earlier so inject s3 client and we are injecting S3 client service and then once you have AWS S3 client you can call these methods upload uh, create signed URL get signed URL based on the unique name and the file name so rest all is pretty much same it's just only that we created a AWS S3 dynamic module and that dynamic module we are injecting in the file service and config module and passing config module dynamically while initializing the AWS S3 dynamic module in the file service so it will always get the file uh, it will always get the config service which contains all these uh, aws parameters so we need to populate those all those things inside our env so i will try to create a aws access key and a secret key for one administrator user i need to log in with a root account and i will create a, one administrator user and then i need to clean up the resources because i will be exposing my access key id and a secret key so don't try to play with that So here we have AWS S3 dynamic. So this is how our dynamic module looks like. We are exposing for root async and uh, inside for root async we are passing the, I mean, we are passing the factory, which is an instance of AWS S3 service. So indirectly when you call for root async, you are actually injecting the instance of uh, this AWS S3 service. And uh, now inside dynamic module, we need to change lots of things so this so this client module is coming from properly files module okay here we need to remove this thing wherever you see the old imports we need to fix them file module app module this looks fine we just need to populate these aws credentials for root async we are passing config module and all these options So now we are just doing a verbose logging so that we can also check if there is a failure. Okay, so this is a file upload API. File upload is allowing you to upload multiple files. Here I'm trying to just uh, log things so I can see that files are coming uh, up and I will try to test this through the Swagger. So here I will just fix all these things. We are just uploading all the files. If there is an error, I will do verbose error logging. So I will get if there is error like invalid credentials, you don't have permissions, you don't have policies not applied. I will just put the debug file so that I can get the, the debug logs. And then if my service started, I can start playing with this uh, APIs. Okay, here is my API. I will do this and okay 
I got something. I need to pass these uh, bucket and all these parameters. Files are getting logged. So that is uh, already known. I don't. I have my env empty. So I will go to my dot env and I need to populate all these parameters that I can do only through AWS account. So this is my AWS uh, administrator account and I will try to log in. So what we are doing is we do have like uh, different accounts, administrator account, root account, you can say. I will just create a bucket and then I won't be using this root account. I can create an administrator user that can uh, have with that user. Uh, we can just create access key ID and a secret key for programmatic access. So we, we have created a bucket, simple bucket with a public access. So this bucket will be created and then the next step is uh, getting the access key ID and a secret key. So I will just uh, skip some of the steps. I hope you already aware how to log into AWS and uh, getting the access key and a secret key. But I will show you these are the user group and user. I have the sandbox user and okay, I'm deleting it because I don't want to use it. I will create a new sandbox user. So there is some change in the console. This is the Udemy user admin and I wanted to specify if you specify, then it will ask you lots of things which I don't want you to pass. So I will select a different option because it will ask you the email password and all. So here we can just set I wanted to create an IM user and custom password you can specify. It, it will auto generate a password for you. Okay. Once the user is created, you can assign that to the group which has administrator access so that this user is an admin user. You download this CSV file and you got the console URL, username and the password. Okay. You can try to navigate to this uh, URL and then uh, this is the AWS account, username and a password, new password, old password, you reset the password. Once that is done, you can just simply log in. So here you log in with the, your administrator user, not a root user. So Udemy user admin, I think that was the, the username and I know the password. So my account is logged in. So I will just try to see my user. So this is what we did. There is a root account, we created a user and uh, added that user to the default group which has administrator access already so we got the user with the admin access as a, in a sandbox group now we can like, log in with that user and try to see if uh, we can use some public bucket okay so we have s3 there is a bucket already created we can uh, just use that bucket okay so if you try to see the permissions bucket settings uh, not public so what we can see is we can edit uh, block all uh, public access and comment that and confirm that is asking because uh, AWS doesn't want you to put things on a bucket which is public and accessible to the world. Okay, so we can edit the policy and allow users to read it. So this is the policy we can just copy it and add that to the this console. So we can edit this bucket policy. There is the edit button. Put this here. Put your bucket name correctly. So this is the ARN, bugudemy.com and save it. So now I can access, this is the action S3 get object you are allowing to the world. Right, so you can access, you can read the bucket. So whatever you upload in the bucket, you should be able to re-access it through the URL. So this is the S3 bucket we have created. That's a public access and uh, it will give us the URL, right? It's give us the public read uh, we have allowed on this. So if I, let's say if I upload this file, I should be able to access this. You can see this is the public URL. Now this is the URL because I can access that file directly. Okay. Now I'm trying to upload the file. Uh, I just copied the access key ID, access secret key because from the user profile, you can create these access keys, download them and uh, use them. So here uh, you can see I am uh, attaching some files and trying to upload. My internet is a little bit slow, but I can see that upload is happening. It is active and it is giving me this URL, which is a public URL. Okay. So that is the URL I is given to me. Now we can uh, hit the post call. So here I can see uh, the files are also uploaded on the AWS S3. 
here I can see all the uploads which I have done and I can see the logs also that these are the, the files which are uploading uh, my internet is a little slow so that means sometimes it is lagging but this is how your simple upload will work and you can upload a multiple files together in an array okay so this is a pretty much file service we are talking about you can upload a multiple files and that this is the same service we are going to use with our dashboard admin i mean we need to have some file service which can upload things to the cloud so this is the service which is doing it 